If you've ever argued about the merits and demerits of capitalism, or whatever you call the dominant political economic system in the world today, you might have heard someone make the point that capitalism is efficient or productive. They might have mentioned the invisible hand of the market. Did you ask them to elaborate? Because under capitalism, efficiency isn't always efficient, and it's not always good. The claim that capitalism and markets are efficient is only ever made in contrast with government provision of something, or some other monopoly. We're taught to think within these limits. Either some company does it, or the state does it. There are plenty of other possible arrangements practiced by many different cultures around the world, but we never hear about them. As I'm going to come back to several times, to provide something, you could just make it available. But not under capitalism. Efficiency means making us pay for everything. What's more, the claim that markets are more efficient than government at providing something doesn't usually come from a comparison of, say, train service in Britain before and after privatization, but just looking at Cold War depictions of people in the USSR lining up for bread and saying, this is what happens when you give up capitalism. And I'm not suggesting the state provide goods and services instead of the market. I'm saying we don't need either. While the question of whether government or corporations should do something matters, on the one hand, on the other, it's a bit of a false dichotomy. Since either way we're asking for one or a small number of institutions to monopolize provision of something, so they control that resource and make all the decisions about it. I'm suggesting we don't have to put up with either type of monopoly if we learn to share again. The solution to monopoly is supposed to be competition. Competition among firms is said to make things more efficient. The idea is, if there are enough firms in the market, they're under pressure to keep their prices low and their quality high. But the thing is, competition has led to virtual monopolies and oligopolies in pretty much every market. Aside from all the help they get from the state, which is instrumental, competition necessarily produces winners and losers. The losers don't just come back and try again next year like in a soccer league. It's more like if the losers joined the winning team and the winning team could now field 22 players at a time. The more successful firms attempt to bankrupt or acquire their rivals. They keep growing until they forge close relations with the state. Too big to fail, as it was called in 2008 to justify a trillion dollars in bailouts. And their domination of the market can no longer be challenged. So while the theoretical perfect competition we learned about in economics class might be efficient, no one knows, what we have is oligopoly. Is oligopoly capitalism efficient? Compared to what? Cooperating and sharing as equals? Seems unlikely. Companies spend huge sums of money developing the same products because sharing research would hurt the competitive advantage they gain from the patent. If there were no artificial barriers to cooperation, we would save huge amounts of time and resources. But sharing knowledge isn't allowed, so corporations spend billions duplicating other people's findings, then billions more on marketing and advertising, which would also be pointless if they weren't competing. Capitalism is a huge waste of energy and creativity and countless hours of labor. But labor is bought and sold in a market, right? So are labor markets efficient? They are an efficient way to find people to work for you. But if you don't have a corporation, that doesn't matter to you. Are they efficient for workers? First, let's consider what a labor market actually is. I've made some videos on it, but to keep it short, labor markets are what you get when you take away people's land and resources and force them to use money. Contrary to popular belief, people in small societies don't use barter but share goods. If you force them to settle in one place, take away their land, and make them use currency, they have to find work from the people with all the money. Over the past 500 years or so, billions of people around the world have been integrated into capitalist labor markets this way. That's a lot of productivity. It's true, people with money create jobs. That's why no one can steal your job. The firm that owns it takes it away from you. Anyway, yes, firms create jobs. The problem is the jobs. It's not something to be grateful for if you think about why people can afford to create jobs. They have all the money 
because workers created it. Because they had to. Because everything had been taken away from them. Why would they be grateful? They should thank you for using them to make more money to tighten your grip on their lives. You should be thanking them for not pitchforking you. But really, we should get out the pitchforks. So of course labor markets seem efficient. A lot can get done when most people around the world spend most of their waking lives working. Because they have to. For whatever pay is available. Many others work all day for no pay, either because they are outright slaves or because their job is to cook and clean for the people in the household who bring in the money and other dependents. Capitalists have captive populations all over the world they can use to keep them rich. That's certainly something capitalism is efficient at, breaking down barriers to capital. Governments working for capitalist interests, like the U.S., offer carrots and sticks to other governments who are reluctant about opening their markets and exposing people to all the plunder and restrictive laws and violent fluctuations of international commerce. The carrots might be obvious. If you work from us, you'll make money from trade, bribes, etc. The sticks might be obvious too, if you know history. If you don't want to get assassinated like Patrice Lumumba, or invaded like Iraq, you play ball. Low barriers to capital entry and flight, low taxes on foreign investment, harsh punishments for thieves. The U.S. has invaded, cooed, and counter-cooed Latin American states so many times, its next invasion is free. Once the government has changed its mind, the country is ready to become a giant market for capitalists to use how they like. Workers now find themselves competing in a global labor market. But do we need to be in a labor market to get anything done? What if we weren't in a market? If things were produced to be shared rather than for profit? Would we still do the pointless work? Would we fill out as many forms as we do now? Would we still be afraid to arrive late? Or would we just do things that need doing and then things we like doing? Why do we spend so much time working just to be allowed food and shelter? Because they're owned by other people. The homes and food are privately owned, the machines to make them or transport them are privately owned, and the land is all privately owned anyway. So most people can't just build their own homes or grow enough food to sustain themselves and their families. If land and nowadays necessarily technology were commonly owned, we wouldn't need money. So we wouldn't need to rely on the people who had it all to live. Automation would mean less work rather than layoffs and lower wages. The things we needed and the knowledge and technology to make them would be accessible to anyone. But commonly owned or unowned resources aren't considered productive. When you start using something for profit, it becomes productive. So making things you're not going to sell is inefficient, especially if you do it at your own pace on your own schedule. You're contributing nothing to the GDP. The purpose of all states throughout history is to enable a tiny minority of the population to wield power over the people they rule. When it gets taken over by capitalist interests, the state's method of concentrating power is to protect and expand property and keep people dependent on markets. So we're all in the labor market now. Is capitalism efficient with our labor? One strike against this system is it requires the creation of a variety of jobs that have little social value, like administration and advertising. Take the police. The main purpose of most law enforcement is to protect property, which by the way means the stuff owned by rich people, not your possessions. Police would be largely unnecessary if things were just shared. Likewise, any job that handles money is probably unnecessary. The job of a cashier is just to take money, to gatekeep goods. Their job is made necessary because the people who own all the food won't let others have any if they don't pay. Security guards are similar to cashiers that way, only there to protect the things we need from being used by people who can't afford them. If things were available to all, supermarkets would be places we could find stuff and take it home. We could convert the vast tracts of land now used for shops, malls, and offices into permaculture ecosystems where we grow more than enough for everyone, or whatever the indigenous people think would be best. The capitalist system is an efficient way of creating, expanding, and protecting property. So be careful what you wish for. 
There are plenty more corporate practices we could point to as inefficient. Bosses requiring us to come into work for the sake of the people who own the office space when we could do our work from home. Running thousands of empty flights, but making us feel guilty for climate change. And I'm sure you have examples from your company or industry. To those at the top of the social hierarchy, people and nature are just tools to be exploited like everything else. They've devised highly efficient methods of extracting value from the human body. Capitalism consumes our physical and mental health with the same voracity it claims everything. You work all day, sit in traffic for hours, estranged from your family and friends, taking orders, doing work you don't like that doesn't matter and hurts your back, making money for people you don't like who donate to the conservative party. There are epidemics of mental illness and drug addiction, and work is a major contributing factor for many people. But your life doesn't matter to shareholders. Your health is worth 0.1% of an uptick in the stock price of the company you work for. Capitalism is so efficient and productive because it takes away our time, effort, minds, and bodies and turns them into wealth. If we measure everything else in terms of overall wealth created, we're doing great. The GDP is rising. The GDP is people's lives, traded for just enough money to get by. Finally, we need to talk about the environment. I've been confidently informed corporate control of goods means they get used efficiently. Do you know of any industry that disposes of its waste efficiently? Any industry that has phased out plastics and fossil fuels? Is it efficient for supermarkets to throw out huge amounts of food every day instead of giving it away? Well, if efficiency is measured in stock prices, probably not even then. Some places are so keen to discourage people from going through their dumpsters, they put locks on them, or even pour bleach on the food. This is not an efficient use of food, or of the land and labor that went into making the food. This is a corporate use of food. When food is no longer for sustaining life, but a product made for profit, efficiency means saving money and passing that on to shareholders. The lower classes? <sighs> Let them eat GDP. So is capitalism efficient or inefficient with nature? Well, I don't know which of those it is, but the results are horrific. All my examples today are the tip of the iceberg. You know about climate change. You know about mass extinction. You know about dumping huge amounts of chemicals in the air and water. You know it's not getting any better. Under capitalism, nature is what can be extracted and where to dump the waste. And while the state can be used to protect individual parcels of nature, the corporation can never stop extracting wealth from the ground, so it just moves somewhere else. Maybe somewhere the people are too deprived and oppressed to fight back. So maybe we shouldn't value the kinds of efficiency capitalism is good at. Sometimes it's okay to use your time inefficiently. It's okay if you're not constantly trying to be productive and squeeze everything into your schedule. It's okay to think about yourself. Capitalism has cost us our time, our physical and mental health, clean air and water, a livable climate, and a future. The good news is if we end this system permanently and try a sharing economy, we can have those things back. If you want to know how, subscribe, because you must not have watched enough of this channel yet. See ya.